All right, it's in tune. Right on. Now, what do I grab the, le the a lever or lever, as you would say? Okay. Now, I have the guitar. <laughs> All right, let's now redo that. I finished my flight. <laughs> That's the shortest flight. Shortest flight ever. So the bitch is the actress. <laughs> yeah, there you go. It's pretty damn good. I want to see if it's a good guitar. So what's it called? This is called the Ascender. Yeah. And the company is called Ciari Guitars, and that is C-I-A-R-I -I Guitars. Right. Um, we are a San Diego, we're a San Diego-based startup, but we make these in Nashville. And today is the first day after a seven-year entrepreneurial journey, and that led, and that's when I filed the first patent application on this. Yeah. Today we offered for pre-sale, actually reservation of a pre-sale, our first 100 guitars. When's this video going up? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, Saturday. Cool, we'll be pretty close to the yeah. first thing, great. Yeah, well, I appreciate that. And yeah. uh, basically, we plucked we pluck the neck with Joe Glazer. Joe Glazer, Glazer Instruments, one of the top tech uh, luthiers in town. Seymour Duncan Thanks, 59s. We've got Ratio Craft Tech, great Ratio Locking Tuners. And what nice. we're trying to do is define a whole new segment within the travel segment, and that is premium travel, which, in our opinion, has never existed. What we're hearing from artists is that there's a there's a need for something for a fly date, a radio tour, a tuck away in the tour bus, maybe during sound check or just songwriting to have a real guitar. So this, in our mind, our goal, the first gig ready pro play travel guitar goes into this backpack. Nice. And literally, so there's a gig bag in here <laughs> that. <laughs> And then the gig bag goes in the backpack, goes under the seat in front of you for the first time ever. And so for guitar air travel, for the first time it can be stress-free because the guitar never leaves your side. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, it's great. Thank you so Fantastic. much. Fantastic. Your, your uh, compliments and attention mean a ton, honestly. This is awesome. Well, Matt, Matt walked by and he goes, you got to check out this guitar. So, <laughs> great work. Thank you very much. Thanks for stopping. Um, SiariGuitars.com. <laughs> there you go. The folding guitar that stays in tune. The Ascendant. And sounds good. <laughs> okay, I'm very excited. This is Aaron at Gizmatron. I, this is, so when I was a kid, Growing up, listening to 10CC and all other great music from the, the 70s, there was a TV show, and I'm blanking on what it was, and they demoed this. The, uh, was it Newsnight? Probably. Yeah. And I just remember being, it's before I learned to play guitar, and I just remember being like, what is this? So, uh, this so is tell a, us. This it's back. Against and it looks exactly the same. Yes, it is. Uh, we recreated it exactly as uh, Musitronics uh, released it in 1979, cream color, rainbow keys, and basically what you have is a series of wheels and these keys. So as soon as you press down a key, you get a spinning wheel. This is wonderful. Now, new yeah. turn. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is gonna go. This is gonna all fall apart. Ah. Mm. Uh,
if I can. Fantastic. I just remember being a kid and like, this is the first time I've ever played one. Tell us a little bit more about the actual design of this. Now, you did confirm this was Godly and Cream that came up with this, so yes. it wasn't crazy. <laughs> Correct. My memory was right. So, uh, the heart of the Gizmotron are the wheels, and in the late 70s, they really didn't have a lot of options for materials. Uh, today, we have literally dozens and dozens of options. Uh, we went with a material that is really robust, it's elastic, it bounces back. And you know we tailored the tooth shape uh, specifically so that it could you know ride up on the string and you know produce a mellow sound, but at the same time attack. And uh, you know the main part of the you know the whole Gizmotron principle is really based upon a spinning wheel that also has an elastic component to it, so the wheel can actually float. And that's important when you're playing the guitar as the strings vibrate the wheel will also vibrate with the string and it will track against the string. And also I was able to bend a note. Exactly. And it carried on working. Sure, yeah. and, the, and the original Gizmotrons, you know, bending was not possible. They basically, you know, advised you to do sort of a, a cello-like bend instead of actually pulling the string up. Sure. It was just sort of gently rocking it back to forth. Yeah. With the new, you know, with the new Gizmotron, it's really no problem. You can bend all the way up or all the way down. It's great. I mean, what made you want to do this? Uh, for me, I mean, I was, just a, I was a big Led Zeppelin fan and Jimmy Page used it on, uh, in the evening and I, I thought it was just the most amazing device. I thought it was great and I was just heartbroken that, you know, how could you have this thing that existed at one time and it no longer exists? And it was just, I thought so it was So is great. it the beginning, is it the swell at the beginning on in the evening? It was I didn't a, know that, I assumed it was an e -boat. Right. So, yeah. you know, Jimmy, uh, Jimmy used the, uh, the Gizmotron on two tracks on that record, uh, Carousel Ombra and In the Evening. But, I mean, that was, that was enough for me to go searching out, you know, the 10cc records, and then you can hear it on Consequences, and it's all its glory, original glory. But a lot of people used it. Paul McCartney used it. Um, it's, it's, it's on a, a lot of records in the late 70s, uh, especially, you know, up in the Manchester area, because that's where Strawberry Studios was. And um, I think right now they still have a museum exhibition for Strawberry, and one of my Gizmotrons is sitting in there along with one of the originals, so... Great. If you have a and it looks check so it much like it. Yeah, 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 I mean... The cream and everything? Yeah, yeah we decided to, you know, give a, all, the, all the color options. Everyone asked me, do you have it black, white? So yeah. we just made them all, and just to try to give a little flavor uh, for everyone. How did, the, how did the company come back into being after all those years? So I, um, I was, I'm a big Led Zeppelin fan and um, I always knew about the Gizzotron. I knew it existed and in 2013 I decided to search uh, you know, for an original, see if I could fix the original, but couldn't fix the original because the original really never worked. So oh, I, I wound up having to redesign the whole thing, found out what the problems were, and I brought it back in 2016. Nice. So it's been. But who was the original designer? Lal Cream and Kevin Godley. So it was Godley and Cream. Godley yeah. and Cream. They had a they had a working prototype, semi working. Kevin Godley said it was semi working, and they got it, they used it on Consequences and you know a bunch of 10cc records and Godley and Cream records, but. They brought it to America, they tried to get Musitronics to make a commercial version of it, didn't work, company went bankrupt. So it was pretty much non-existent from 1981 until 2016 when it came back, so. 
Fantastic. Thank you. Well, good job. Thank you, sir. We're very excited, thank yeah. You, thank you. So we're with Will from Nugent. How are you? Good, how are you doing? I'm good, I'm good. What do you have uh, new and nutritious you want to tell us about? So today we're going to talk about Nugent's MasterCheck Pro. Uh, it's a new metering software. Uh, it's really slated towards those people kind of mastering and mixing all in one, people pumping out singles from home. That's generally what I use it for. I've used it, I love it. Yeah, so uh, started getting to play with it the last few weeks and I've just been having a blast. I set it last thing on my master chain, everything's gonna go through it, I know exactly what limiting's going on. It's, it's, it's showing true metering from this point of view. So basically what it's for is different streaming sites have their own way of data compression and uh, changing the codec once it uh, kind of goes up into the internet. So they all have kind of what they're looking for in terms of volume level. This basically just lets you know exactly what they're looking for and mix to that. So say we're wanting to go to Spotify, that's generally what I start with. Pull open Spotify, you're gonna have this little number right here, negative 14 LKFS. That's what Spotify is hoping to get from every mix. So we hit play. This is kind of a quieter sec, or the chorus, sorry, of this song. So we're looking at about negative 14.8, kind of towards the bottom of this green uh, meter here. We're right at the bottom, but we're in that ideal range that they're kind of looking for. We also have our uh, dynamic range and kind of the meter instantaneous with that. Change mid-side, just a different way of, uh, depending on your mixing strategies, you can take a look at that. My personal favorite thing is down here, this codec option. So you can switch to actually hear what processing is happening through these different sites. So say you click on desktop from Spotify. Now what you're hearing is the processing that Spotify does through the desktop app as people are listening to it. And even another option, this is one of my favorites, you hit this little uh, symbol in the center once you've selected one of these codecs, and you can hear what's missing. So all this information here is being taken out every time somebody streams this mix. Oh it's yeah, just, I love it. It just disappears. The mobile one. I love hearing this. I don't love that yes, it does it, exactly, but I love exactly. knowing what it's doing. It, basically, my, since using this, my mixes have gotten quieter, my dynamic range has gotten a little bit bigger, and mixes just translate better. What I hear in my home studio is also what I hear when I play any of these mixes on Spotify, iTunes, Pandora, uh, YouTube. It even has television broadcasts for Europe, uh, BBC standards, US standards. So it's great for mixing, mastering, if you uh, put out your own music, if you're working in broadcast. Uh, as of today, they added some MP3 and SoundCloud options as well. So it's just, they're constantly updating all these new codecs, all these new sites that are happening every week, it seems. They're updating, they're keeping things constant, and your, your mixes are just gonna be cleaner because of it. Wonderful, I love it. Yeah, we, we did a review on it a few months ago and yeah. absolutely love it plugin. It's a great idea. Um, I found it pretty easy to use. Which yes, is, I, I keep telling people it's idiot proof. Yeah. Somebody told me the it's preset. It's good because I'm an idiot. Uh, same here. <laughs> I, I pull it open, I started mixing, and I love it. I've used it every day since then. So uh, it's generally $199 up until August 22nd. It's $149, doing a 25% off discount. So great. everybody who's going to be a new owner, check it out. It's definitely worth it. Wonderful. So I'm with my friend Raj from Stealth Sonics. How are you? I'm good. I'm Always. better now that I met you. <laughs> I know. Always good to see you. Thank you. Always good to see Thank you. you. Um, so, what have you uh, got that's new and nutritious? What do you want to tell us about? New in the company. So, for those of you that don't know, we are mainly an audiology company based in Singapore. And we are bringing audiology to audio, right? So we just launched the company in January 2018, uh, but besides what you've already covered in your last video, there are some things we're going to be releasing in the fall and uh, in, uh, at Anaheim uh, in Winterdam. Uh, and that's going to be a new and improved uh, four driver unit. Our current four driver is probably the most popular uh, model for us in the US. And we're going to improve on it. We are going to be uh, including uh, more premium drivers that give a better low end response. And we are also going to be introducing uh, a single driver unit for those more price conscious uh, customers. What kind of price will that be? Uh, I don't want to say too much, but definitely it's going to be under US 150. 
Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. Uh, and well, we are, I'm a user, <laughs> and I love them, and I fly with them, and yeah. so I can, only, I can speak very highly. And uh, without really, uh, without releasing too much information, there's a third thing that we are going to be releasing again in uh, summer in uh, winter. Nam, sorry, uh, and that's mainly for people who who want to have a bit more bass in their units and want the flexibility to turn that bass down. Uh, we are going to be introducing something that gives the customer uh, that choice in one IEM to turn okay. their bass up and down. But that's something we're going to be releasing that's uh, really cool. at Winter Nam. Yep. So you don't have to buy a new unit. You can just, at a flick of a switch, adjust your bass on your IEM. Nice. Yeah. Very nice. <laughs> so those are the new things that we are working on. And uh, of course, we are releasing our first uh, hearing protection set as well. Great. Uh, hearing plugs. Very uh, important. For, and these are attenuated filters uh, with uh, breathable sound. Do we have them here? So these are what we call noise plugs. And they are not just normal plugs that um, just block your ears. Yep. These are attenuated filters. So if you can just pop your hand out. Yep. They're just small filters like this that we have developed on our own. And these are membranes that breathe. So it's just not a block, but it allows your ears to breathe so there is no moisture buildup. And this gives you minus 33 dB isolation. How, how much? Minus 33 dB. Oh wow, minus 33, that's yeah. huge. And it, like I said, it's breathing. So most of the ear protection is just a block right there. And that causes moisture buildup, right? Yeah. Yeah. And this is the universal we'll be having the custom as well already in the fall. So with the customs, you definitely get minus 33. This is probably slightly less than that. But again, you don't feel that it's so much of a block. No, it's nice. Right? To be honest, I probably wear them all the time. <laughs> and you can use it on a plane. It doesn't really cause moisture build up simply because your ear is still allowed to breathe. Yeah, that's a really good idea. Yeah. But I also, frankly, like the idea of uh, wearing something I mean, this environment here is so crazy loud. It's about 80, de 80 decibels right here now. Yeah, just, <laughs> just ambient 80 yeah, yeah. decibels. Yeah, that's fantastic. So it actually, with a 33 uh, dB kind of yeah. reduction, it just starts to feel a little bit more calmer. <laughs> I think everybody here is going to want a pair. Yeah, yeah, wonderful. For sure. Well, thank yeah. you very much. Hi, everybody. We're with David from Wild World. How are you doing today? You having a good time? Great. Yes. Hi, Warren. You were telling me about this the other day, so I wanted to sort of pin you down to sort of describe this process. You've come up with this process to test cables. Yes. Obviously, you make great cables. There's a quote with me up there because I use your cables and I love them. And they are not cheap, and they're not cheap because they're amazing. Well, thank you. So. What is this that you've come up with to test them? Well, we, we call this the microphone cable polygraph, and we call all our tests polygraphs because they tell you the truth about cables. In the microphone cable polygraph, we've got splitter boxes that give us three outputs from the microphones that we can use for comparison. The most important thing is that one of those outputs goes directly into the mic prees without cable. Right. The, the other two go through cables, and so we end up with three stereo tracks with the only difference being the cable or no cable. Interesting. And so without cable, we can hear more than we can hear with any cable. Okay, so to be clear, one goes directly from the mic directly in. Right. Another one goes through one of your cables and then another one goes through actually quite an expensive competitor's cable I see there. Right. So you can compare the three results, direct with no cable, direct with your cable, direct with somebody else's cable. Yeah, it's a nice idea. Well, thank you. Yeah. So this is already working out. We're going to be doing some more recordings with it soon. And, uh, you know, we hope to be publishing the results for people to hear. That's great. Yeah, fantastic. That's the plan. Now, of course, this is the kind of testing we do uh, with all of our products. When I was talking about using your guitar cables, um, I got them in a roundabout way because I'd experienced the it was pretty long. I experienced the 200-foot cable. You know, the generic, and no disrespect to Guitar Center, it was just like an off-the-shelf Guitar Center, affordable, like probably $50, 200-foot cable. Yeah. And the signal loss was atrocious, particularly, obviously, in the high end. And moving to a high-quality cable was like a night and day. You didn't need to, you know, reverse the polarity to hear what was being lost. I mean, it was so obvious that so, you know, it's the long cable runs that are really, really obvious. But even in short distances, you know, the difference between a high-quality cable like yours and others is quite, quite measurable. 
So. Right, and, and beyond quality, it actually took some design and material science to solve the problems and get as close to the sound of the original sound as, we could, as we're getting now. Is there anything you can tell us about that that really is unique? Yeah, well, it, it just turns out that the loss factors in cables were more than a few. Yeah. And, and the worst one is called eddy current resistance, and it's caused by the twisting of bundled strands. So uh, eventually I learned how to create a design where we don't need to do that, and yet the cable is completely flexible and the impedance can be tuned properly. Yeah. And, that, and of course the noise problem, everybody knows handling noise in an instrument cable or, or microphone cable, this turned out to be much worse than we originally thought, because as we learned to reduce the noise, the fidelity improved. Wonderful. That's really amazing. I will say another, probably not relevant, but I also love the feel of your cables. Like they feel absolutely fantastic. There's something like this is a, won't say who it is, but it's quite an expensive cable. Yeah, the flexibility was a real challenge. Yeah, it's. And it is one of the things that improves the sound. Oh, really? Yeah, because of mechanical feedback. Oh, so a byproduct of that is the fact that the cable just, yeah, it, it just feels more classy. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you ever so much for letting us know that. Thank you. Thank you. I'm with Sako from OVO. How are you? Hi. Hi, everyone. Sako here from OVO Speaker. I'm doing great. Thanks, Warren, for this fun. being there, having fun, playing guitar all day. It's, so it's this is really what happens. Cool. I'm there talking to a couple of friends, Wild World, make what I consider to be the best cables. We absolutely love them. Stealth Sonic, some good friends of ours. And I look over, and Sako's playing this really cool BC Rich which apparently he said with new was only like five or six hundred dollars so that's rather yeah, nice although you did change the pickups same the pickup the same old Duncan's I just just my guitar I just had it for, for quite a few years and uh, yeah it's been it's been in many places Marvelous. many countries so that drew me over hey and then I'm like what are you doing so oh. you know what what are you doing? So we have this very cool speaker, um, which is designed and manufactured in Japan. Uh, it's a USB speaker. Um, it solves the main issue with any wireless solution, which is audio latency. This has no audio latency. It's a 24-bit high-resolution digital speaker. So you can use this with any tablet or laptop musical software. When you're a musician, you're traveling away from your home studio, your pro equipment, you're working on a project. This speaker allows you to have real time, high quality, high definition audio. It's extremely lightweight, has no battery. You don't need to charge. You don't need to pair with a software always ready to use. Takes the data and the power from the USB cable. You just plug in, always ready to, to work. Great. Um, it's really, really it's very cool. loud for its size and weight. Um, it's super high quality manufacturing. The, the people who are making it have been doing high end professional music uh, audio electronics for decades. Um, and it's selling in Japan very well. We're just bringing it to the US. First time in the US today here. That's really great. I love Summer Nam. I love this stuff. Well, I, we always discover new stuff here quicker than we do because the, the problem with the Winter Nam, as much as we love it, is it's about 5,000 times the size. There's a million people. Yeah, yeah. And, you, I, and yeah. I always go to Winter Nam to find new things. I want to find new things. This is uh, $180. Yeah. So that's a great price. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, I so love it's it. Just coming to the US, super loud for a small size. And, um, and since you have no latency, you can, you can use it with an instrument. You'll have real-time real -time audio. We're using GarageBand as a modelization, as an amp. So anyone's working on a project with another musician while traveling in a hotel room, whatever, you can take the speaker, just plug in. It will always work. No need to charge anything or prepare anything. And right away, you can do tap recording. You can work on tracks. You can record an ID you have and still hear it and hear your effects through the through the speaker. And then just for leisure, take and this, leisure, stick it on top of the TV in your hotel room absolutely. and play some music. It has a special mode for watching movie with dynamic audio processing. Nice. Uh, has some special um, uh, battery optimization feature. So if it's if it's plugged on a smartphone, it will drain less power, it will adjust the volume. 
and you have an external power port so you can give it its supplemental electric power and bring it up to full volume that's without good, draining the It's good because you don't always want the fatiguing aspect yeah. of earbuds yeah, or headphones. Absolutely. It has a five band parametric EQ that gets stored in the flash memory so if you're really in high-end audio settings you can do a lot of things with that. It's very Japanese, very the fact Japanese. that it does a thousand things. Yes. It does a thousand things yeah. in a very minimalist yeah. design. Has no on-off button, it's very simple, you plug, it works. But when you dig deeper, it's, it does a lot of things. It's very Japanese. Yeah, I, I, I remember in my 20s going to Japan and seeing all kinds of things that I didn't see in Europe for like another five or ten yes, years. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, love yeah. like, Absolutely. they love the new. Absolutely. They love the new. <laughs> this, this company is investing a lot on the USB standard yeah. and, uh, and there's good reasons for that. Uh, the, the future of the, the USB port is, is pretty big as it carries more and more electric power. So it will, it will be able to uh, deliver more and more experience. In that case, we have the digital audio data and the electric power all coming into right. into one port. Well, thanks for showing it. Sure, thank you very much. Thanks, thanks, Warren. Thank you. Appreciate it. So we were just talking about the wonderful world of the uh, black magic of mastering yes. and how you know you'll go to all these great mastering engineers we grew up listening to, and they've got ten pieces of equipment and no no meters are moving and stuff, and it's all about the low, the transformers, the tubes, the this and the that. So when you told me about this last year, I was like, ah. That makes sense. Put it all together in one unit. So, is that, is that a good intro it's to very, what it does? A very good intro. And I mean, and really, honestly, you know, a, a compressor, uh, an EQ, you know, they have a very specific, you know, intention for what they can do. And uh, a lot of times in mastering, the way that I work is that I might not be using my compressor to compress, but the the compressor that I'm using is going to impart a sound. Um, in mastering, and so I wanted something that was more versatile, that could impart that sound in many more ways, um, that we could just add up to something that's really great. And so that's what we did with this. So this is a tube loading amplifier. Right here is the main section, it's the loading section. Um, right here we're going to be loading the tube to add harmonic distortion, um, a little bit of that tube, not necessarily color, but feel. Um, when you're using the loading knob, we are also auto padding the gain. So loading the tube and not hearing any kind of gain difference. Okay, and we have three ways that we deal with that padding. Three, we are padding the input signal before it hits the tube, before we load the tube. Post, we're padding the input signal after we hit the tube. Not hearing any level increase at all here. But on the last selection open, we are eliminating the padding and you just hear tube gain. So it's gonna increase gain and increase the tube loading. Um, within this section, there is a clean mode and a bloom mode. And this is just how we're loading the tube, how we're hitting the tube. Um, kind of the name of it is what it's doing. This is a cleaner selection. This is more of that tube sound. Uh, beyond this loading section, we have a parallel lift filter. Here, we're gonna have a subtle high frequency lift, low frequency lift, or both. And because it's parallel, it's nice and gentle, it gets affected by this loading section and gets blended back in afterwards so that it's very light. Here we have transformer. We can be completely transformerless when it's set to out. And then we have two ways of loading the transformer for two different kind of layers of sound. We have a solid state output, 11 dB of boost and cut, and if you, because it's stepped, it was really important to us to make it easily recallable. But um, because it's in 1 dB steps, we wanted something that could really refine it. So the resolution switch down here could add a half dB or a quarter dB, um, depending on what you might need, which is sometimes really a big difference in mastering. So that's really the gist of it. Um, it's really great to be able to spend about 20 minutes with this unit, really get, understand the controls, and then work your way through adding the layers in, in different ways and different amounts and see what it does. It's completely program dependent, so it may work in one way on some one kind of music on rock and roll, but you try the same setting on something else, very different. Um, so it's it's really it's a lot of fun to use. I've been using it since we finished our prototype, and it's still really just a blast. Fantastic. Well, thanks everyone so much for showing it. Thanks for. 
talking to me, Warren. <laughs> so we're here at Useful Arts. How are you, my friend? Doing great. Really nice good. to see you. What do you have that's new? We have two new things good. at Useful Arts. Um, we have a studio version of our DI Instrument Pre that uh, features a, a 80 dB noise floor, uh, which is pretty good for a tube device. Um, and, a, and a single channel uh, all tube mic pre with variable second harmonic distortion and inductively loaded outputs like the old Telefunkens. So is that the color here? That's the color here. Um, the thing about this is no matter where you set this knob, the frequency response curve is absolutely flat. The graph will look exactly the same and it sounds like 10 completely different boxes in one box which is an interesting way of thinking about frequency response curves. They don't tell you everything because you will have all the headroom and all the flatness with varying degrees of second harmonics and you will have completely different personalities in one box. Plug this into this and you have a pretty great bass channel. Oh, wow. Yeah. So this is brand spanking new. I haven't seen this, so tell me a little bit about that. I see, I see Vance Powell sitting on top here. Vance uses uh, the, the smaller version with the switching power supply. This has a linear power supply, okay. um, studio-grade linear power supply running at 250 volts from our mic breeze, and that enables us to get the noise super, super low and give it even more headroom by running the tubes at 250 volts. So the, the signal chain here is a tube impedance converter Converter operating at 20 meg ohms input impedance, a 2BQ, a tube preamp into a 5050 nickel custom output transformer. Tubetastic. Yes, indeed. <laughs> yes. Um, do you have any sort of characteristics that you could describe of it? Well, I would say the, the main characteristic is, you know, people tend to reach for compression a lot yeah. for a lot of different things. And often it's not because they want a compressor. It's not because they actually want gain reduction. It's because they want a great sounding line amplifier. This gives you that, but it's sort of the opposite of compression because the high input impedance allows the dynamics of the signal to jump around without attenuation by the load of the input stage. And so you get you get a bloom to the sound. You ask, that's probably the best adjective I can come up with, is, is a bloom. You can really hear the ridges on your fingers, on the strings. You, you hear what the instrument truly sounds like. And then if uh, if you want to have fun and get a little bombastic, the EQ can, can actually break some windows uh, if you're using <laughs> it with bass. Um, it's flat from 10 hertz to 80 kilohertz. What is, uh, where's that shelf? Well, it, it, the, the, the these are these are two shelving boosts. Yeah, the low okay. frequency and the high frequency start at the same place, which is 700 hertz, and go up from there. And as crazy ah. as that sounds, this was designed by ear, not by eye. Right. So I actually designed this just to sound right, and when I put it into an analyzer, I couldn't believe where the curves were, but they sound right, they sound so right for an doing, instrument. Right, doing yeah. this from 700. Exactly. It's like, it's it's sort of this kind of thing. Nice. Yeah. 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 Oh, so, that's really exciting. I want, to, I want to hear one of these. Ah, well, I'd be happy to happy to play one for you if you'd like. Okay. But uh, <laughs> but yeah, and, the, and then the other thing is just like with the BF1, um, it offers two outputs. Yeah. So you can take your um, unbalance out to an amp and get the tone out of the amp while at the same time using it as a DI right. instead of using a through. So you get you get a little bit of extra uh, tone if you're on stage or if you're just miking an amp you can have that tone both ways. And is this, is uh, so this is always just neutral? This is, or is this a selection to make it not neutral? This, this is a selection. So this gray uh, button is a true bypass yep. uh, on the EQ. Yep. When I bypass the EQ, yep. I mean, I've got a tube stage that's doing nothing. So we have this red button yep. that allows you to engage that and you get 24 dB of total gain and added second harmonic nice. content. Uh, so it's very flexible that way. Yeah, this is cool. And this is, and the, the baby one here is what Vance is using? Yeah. The difference between these two is the audio uh, signal path is exactly the same. The difference is the power supply. This has a switching power supply, so it's lighter and more compact. This one's heavier and bulkier, but it has uh, a linear power supply with a toroidal transformer and every, you know, everything you could want in a power supply. I presume you've been switching. This is easy. You're selling this all over the world. Yes. This one you have to... 
you just flip flip the switch in the fuse box and it can be used anywhere all over the world. But, oh, okay, great. But this is this automatically adjusts to line adjusts. power anywhere, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a nice little attribute. It's yeah. it's handy, yeah. It, it it prevents you from doing something like taking it to the UK and plugging it in, forgetting to reset it yeah. and having the fuse blow. Yeah, um, so wonderful. Yeah. Well thanks ever so much. Yeah, no, pleasure talking to you. Great talking to you thanks. too. Okay, it's really loud here. How are you, Patrick, from I'm Eventide? Good. I'm great. Thank you. <laughs> so we're doing a what is new at Eventide. So let us know, what have you got new? Oh, I'll tell you what's new, all right. So we got a few new things in the pedal world. So for one, we got a new algorithm coming out called Harmadillo, that's a harmonic tremolo. Um, we also have new software for the H9000 that allows V63, which is people can make their own algorithms from scratch. Fantastic. Yeah, but the big new new thing for us is we're getting our hands wet in iOS plugins. So, you know, now you can have a studio quality effect like from your phone. So you can That's start. Amazing. Oh yeah, totally. So we just released three new ones. Okay, what are they? Black Hole is one of them. Yeah, and what is Black Hole? Black Hole is a lush reverb atmospheric. A lot of people yeah. use it for like pads and stuff like that. It just gives you a ton of like um, high quality decay. Fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. And then we also released micro, uh, sorry, ultra tap, yeah. which is a multi-tap delay, and you can blend the taps, you can spread the taps up to 64, or you could even like do a swell and like kind of do like an auto wah thing or auto swell, wow. sorry. Great. And then finally, we have our famous micro pitch. This one is like an even tied staple. This is if you want to thicken up your sound, sure. really get that like classic um, like separation from your sound, make it wider. I, I use uh, my H3000 all day to do this stuff. Awesome, yeah, we actually got presets in here, that's like H3000 micro pitch. Beautiful. Sure. What else you got going on? Sure, what else we got going on is we got the 9000 set up over here. Yep. And that's running into these MIDI controllers, which is gonna be just like controlled by this iPad, which yep. is a software that we just use. So it's just showing off how easy it is to kind of just like quickly switch sounds in the 9000. So for example, I can just pass it through here and then we have like a regular piano sound. I'll even raise the volume a little bit. Regular piano, but if we hit this, just hold down a low note. So that's a regular piano that's being turned by the 9000 to just a soundscape. Nice. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> there we go, it's an orchestra for a piano. Exactly, um, instant movie score. So what do you got in the way of pedals? Sure, man. So right here we got, we were actually showing off the Rose this year, so we got a ton. I'm gonna grab a guitar. Oh, heck yeah, dude. So this is Harmadillo. This is our new harmonic tremolo algorithm yeah. for the H9. The okay. idea being that like, you can get this really nice like tremolo sound without losing any volume. And also, you, there's an envelope follower with a rate, so you can actually like set your speed to a certain way. Okay. And if you play harder, like your like rate is higher than if you like play slower or the other way around. So. There you go. Yeah. Oh, what's that? There's a drive circuit in the algorithm. Yeah, there's a drive circuit built into the algorithm. Oh, wow. Yeah. A lot of fun. And then I saw the, uh, the, rose the rose when I was in Germany the other day. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I can turn, I can activate this for you real quick. The rose is our new, like, take on a delay pedal, basically. So it's, we call it Bit Bucket Brigade. It's based on a Bucket Brigade delay, but with digital, like, circuits in it. Everything else besides that is analog filters, your right. modulation, everything else is analog. The cool thing about that is that you get the bit bucket, you get the bucket brigade sound, but without the degradation. Nice. Plus you can reverse your delay, you can multiply your delay, yeah. um, and you can also just like go up to like a lot of seconds, yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. 
Not to mention, this thing has MIDI, so you can access your presets via MIDI and all that kind of stuff. The other day when I was in Thailand, they had, oh, do you have it? What was the big reverb? Oh, like uh, just a black hole stuff. So we've always had like yeah. the space pedal, yeah. which is like our reverb section of all our pedals. Okay. All that stuff is inside the H9 too. So you can uh, see there in H9 control, you can access all your okay. big reverbs. Do you want to hear a big reverb sound? Yeah, give us a big reverb. This one's called Mod Echo Verb. Nice. a tremolo verb. And this one's the famous black hole. So the 9000 can do like 16 effects, all of, 16 algorithms all at the same time, series parallel. A lot of people are using them live right now. I didn't know anything about that. Dude, it's really meant as a studio unit, like a studio effects yeah. unit. Yeah. But the sounds in there are so good and the MIDI is like so, you know, accessible and really easy to program that people just kind of started using it live. I, I, didn't, I didn't know that. I honestly didn't know that. Cool, man. Like, this one's the cure if you want to check it out. And this one's a bit more, like, a bit more ethereal. <laughs> Gorgeous. Gorgeous. It's the H nine thousand. It's called a salamander. Chorus salamander, yeah. And there's more effects. <laughs> So good. This one's pretty cool. So a little tiny mic.
I didn't know anything about this. So that's an, a, a, an additional floor unit? That you yeah, so this to? is a mastermind by RJM. And what we have running is like we're running scenes on the H9000. So that's going to like my program changes. So for example, if I map this to a certain program change, it's just going to recall it the 9000. And there's, there's a totally different sound. Right. I've been doing uh, doing some cool things. You know, we got we got this. Finally, you can actually see it now. Okay, great. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the red dots that have kind of an API-ish kind of tone. Yep. And these are tone lux amplifiers. They they sell me the amps and transformers nice. for this. And then these are ICs. And then you have each one of those on a bus, so you can pick A, B, or C, and pick each one of the console sounds that you want. Right. And you can blend them, which is really cool. Because the, the Terry Lewis has the, the studio, Terry Lewis and Jimmy Jam, they got the studio. They bought a 16-channel version, and I go in there and I see like the kick and the snare with the two on, overheads with the third one on, you know, nice. and they get these different, it's really cool, they love it. It's like a little toy, you know? No, I love that. So I got approached by Ronald Prince. Yep. And he said, because you know, a long time ago, we went over there because I made the 2500 and he wanted to, he wanted to talk about a console, and he wanted to also have a surround 2500. So I built in the surround version of it, which is like four of them. And we went over to Belgium, and we got into the studio, and he, you know, he said to me, I want you to build me a console. So on the, on the flight back, we designed the division. And that's what we put in there, and he had it for a long time, and he wanted to do it, and now they want to do all the, the streaming services are now requesting everything in immersive. And they're, they're smart because they're not ready for it yet, but they know they will be. They're very smart, yeah. Yeah, because they want it stereo 5.1 and immersive. So they don't have to come back and say, Warren, would you remix that for us? Well, sure, it's another $8,000. Yeah. Know. A song, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's what they want. So we're doing a fold down mixer as well as a console. We're doing a 64 channel uh, immersive module that does left, center, right, and then front, wide, rear. Yeah. And then there's a, a wide panner and a rear panner. So you can do LCR, side surround, and rear surround, and then lower plane and upper plane and quad on the ceiling. And it's all gonna be in this module. That's amazing. Yeah, I have a picture of it. It's, it's cool, and they're doing it, and we're putting it in in August. I mean, kids, if you're watching, yeah. um, Get, get on this world because yeah, that's going to be a lot of work. Because it almost sounds like it's going to be like the CD revolution. You talked to Howie Weinberg when he was like 22 and first start mastering. I was like, you know, asking him about his journey, and he's like, yeah, my, my his second year as a mastering engineer was his busiest year ever. Because everybody's like, oh, there's these new things called CDs. We need to remaster it. Yeah, and you have to be all remastered. So I have a, 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 a very good friend of mine who's an engineer. I won't mention his name because he's still negotiating this deal. Right. But he got approached because he's done surround stuff and he has a room that can do that. So these guys, they come up to him and they say, well, would you be interested in doing that? Well, sure, yeah, it's work. I could like to remix stuff and immerse him and stuff like that, you know? And they go, okay, well, we'll send you a catalog list and just, you know, let us know if you think about if it's, if it's good. He says, sure. So they email him a list, 8,000 recordings. Wow. <laughs> wow. So That is amazing. Yeah, so there's a lot of work out there's there. There's a business opportunity in yes, this. Right. And, you know, of course, we've been here this week and Blackbird have just, you know, they finalizing just this, yeah. their room, their immersive room. Capital have had one for a little bit now. So we're doing a, uh, we're also doing a monitor controller that does 
12 channels. Right. And you can do left, right flip, front, rear flip, yep. solo all of them. It has a talkback facilities for eight channels. Uh, it's all expandable, so you can buy the stereo one, you can go to five one, you can go to sur do surround, you can do immersive. You can just yep. add the cards as you grow. Right. And it sits, as, it's a lot like the slate control. It'll sit like this, it'll have a remote box. Right. And then we're actually coming out, um, I'm designing a new slate control that will be just this self-contained, and it'll be about 500 bucks. That'll do, it'll have a couple of features in it that we're not gonna announce because we don't want anybody else to do them yet, but they're gonna be really cool. Nice, Yeah, I know they will be. So, everything uh, you do is really cool. So that's basically, that's basically um, what the what this thing is, and the console itself is going to be really cool. And of course, I use up all the buses in the module, so we have to do a send module now. So there's going to be eight channel send module because we have left, center, right, front, side, rear, side pan, rear pan. Then you have the EQ section that I have here, the inputs, and then up here is the the upper lower plane and the surround ceiling. So. See, people come to me all the time and say, you know, you see all the videos I do and I still produce and engineer and mix and write, blah, blah, blah. And they would say to me, Warren, do you ever sleep? And I must think, if I never sleep, you must never sleep time. Her. Yeah. Ever. Never sleep her. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you, you're always involved in so many things. You know, it's so funny. Well, I did, you know, it's like the, uh, hang on. I mean, it's probably because you're really, really smart. <laughs> I just did this. I think being really, really smart helps probably because what yeah. might take me three days probably takes you three hours. I did this for Analog Alien. Yeah. And this is a thing where you can come in guitar, go through, come in minus 10 or come in plus four. Yeah. You, go, you can come out guitar, you can come out minus 10 and come out plus four. And if you put a guitar into here and come out and record, yeah. then you, re you play, the, play it back here, it comes out here exactly the same level. Plus it has two inserts for pedals. So you can do it and you can combine them together. So if you have two delays, they'll flange because they're in parallel. But right. it's also a reamper. It's also, you can use a stick. You can plug the stick in here and here and it sums them together. All three inputs can be used at the same time and all the outputs. This is one of the things that I did. And I do these side things, you know. Um, so, so the other side day. Side things, I love it. I know, there's little side things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, the other night, and this is literally like like you read about, but never really happened. So I'm I'm laying in bed. I don't know. One of the dogs barks. I wake up. It's 3:30 in the morning, and I realize I forgot to send some files to the board house, along with the other files that I sent them. And it was like in the middle of the night. I dream this, and I wake up, and I go in my office, send the files, and then go back to bed and go to sleep. So I do occasionally sleep. You do occasionally sleep. <laughs> you slept either side of that. Yes, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, I love what you do. I mean, we we were at uh, Winter Nam, whatever, a year and a half ago. When I did my Led Zeppelin thing, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> that was amazing. But I went to three different consoles, you, you, Sound Techniques, and what was the other one? And everybody's like, yeah, Paul Wolf helped us design this. Yeah. <laughs> You're a There's busy man. Somebody Somebody that came up to me that goes, you know, they walk up to me and they go, I, I just want to introduce myself. I've talked to like 10 people around here yeah. and every one of them had a product you designed. And I just want to know, and you have your own stuff, you know? No, I do, I think of these things. And you know, it's like it, one of the hard things is, you know, owning API, I had, I did all that stuff. Yeah. And I had to kind of stay within the constraints. When I did Tone Lux, I wanted to have a different look, a different knob, different op amp, different transformer, different functions, different features. So I did, I came out with a whole new feature set. And when I did this, I didn't want to just be what that was or what that was, so I came out with a whole new feature set for this. So I don't know if there's like one more in there or, you know. <laughs> <laughs> well now Immersive's out, you... Well I did, uh, Ronald and I worked a long time. He's going out, the studio's actually in Auburn, he's moving to, to New York. And he's with Joey DeMaio. It's a studio called Valhalla. It's a beautiful church. Wonderful. And it's just amazing inside. And they're going to be, he's already got work booked. I mean, it's, it's already, it's like, here, here's five million songs. Can you just do them in a week, you know? Yeah. So we're going to do a full down mixer so he can do simultaneous stuff. And we're, we're actually trying to get Dolby to, to take a look at it and see if we can get them to certify it. Actually, that would be amazing, yeah. You know, analog, what? Yeah. 
No, that's amazing. So we'll see what happens. But yeah, I just I just come up with ideas, and I just I don't have enough of me to to put them all out. So I give them off to other companies, you know. <laughs> well, thanks for talking to us. I really appreciate all right. it. Nice to see you again and again and again and again. And I definitely want a T-shirt. We'll get everyone a T-shirt. Oh, <laughs> Eddie, how are you? Good. <laughs> So what is new in Sonar Works? So we have version 4.3 out. Okay. Like from visual perspective, we have dark mode added. Yep. And uh, the biggest new thing is we have third filter announced. Uh, it, uh, up to now we, ha we had uh, zero latency or phase linear filtering. So now we have mixed filter, which is so, some kind of compromise between linear phase and zero latency. So we have less latency, but also less mess with the phase, uh, de dealt with the pre ringing issues. So it's some kind of compromise if you use our software on tracking. Marvelous, thank you very much. Hello, Eddie from Golfos, how are you? I'm great, how are you? Good to see you. Nice to meet you, yeah. Well, so uh, what do you have that's new and nutritious? Well, you have some stuff to tell us about? Sound Theory still just has Golf Hoss. That's currently right. the only plugin we have, but we do have a short list of uh, new and innovative ideas that are on right. the way. Um, the main developers are back in Germany right now, and they're having meetings on maybe adding some new features to Golf Hoss, right. some, some user-requested things. So, yeah. Lovely. We love Golf Hoss. Yeah. yeah. It's really, really cool, and I, I, I love that everybody else is starting to love it as well. I, yeah. see, I see there's a nice buzz. Ever yeah. since that video you did, that really, that, that helped us, yeah. It, well, I'm, I'm kind of dumb, you know, some people don't necessarily respond to the way I do things, but the way I do things is I like to just be the regular user who opens it up and discovers it as you go, right. and sees the functions. And what I love, and I, now, the, now I've found it to be something I use less broad now, as I've got into it. With the range and, limiters? Yeah, because yeah. when I first started, you, it's really good on like average electric guitars to try to bring right. them to life. So it's you're great. already putting it on buses now, which is, so once you get more comfortable with it, it kind of goes off of the two bus and you can kind of experiment in different places. For sure. Yeah, and it just, one of the things I think um, a lot of rock mixers find is that they're taking elements like live instruments and they're competing against you know the volumes, uh, the, you know the limited dynamic range of a lot of right. you know EDM stuff, which is cool. But you know you want your music on Spotify to like basically compete in a playlist. Because I've got a son who's 12, and he'll like go Queen, and then some band I've never heard of, which is totally electronic, and then right. some you know basically super eclectic. Kids love just music now. Right. Not, when we were super young, they we liked a style of music. Now they just love all kinds of music. So. This kind of tool, Golfos, is becoming kind of essential because you can sit there and like start to get really sculpt your tracks so they can compete right. in that world. And that, that's what sets us apart from some of these other EQ companies. You'll, you'll start to see smart EQs coming in trying to imitate Golfos, but the main difference is that Golfos is just trying to maximize the amount of information reaching the listener's brain. Because when your brain has more to chew on, it's happier. Things sound more pleasing. So there's no target curve, there's no artificial intelligence. Golfos is source agnostic, so it you can send it anything. Source agnostic, I like that. There you go. I'm yeah. gonna use that. We're getting, we're getting technical <laughs> now, yeah. So. But it, it's, it really is different than any other EQ, and we encourage you, download all the trials, put it on the two bus, you know, fight them out, let, let them AB, and I think you'll quickly realize that Golf House is doing something that no other plugin can offer. So. And to be honest, it doesn't, uh, how, can I, how can I make this sound right? Because I don't want to be derogatory, but it's, it's the least, it does the most with sounding like it's doing the least. Yes. It's does very, that make sense? That, absolutely. It's very transparent, and yeah. it's actually not touching any of your dynamics. There's no compression going on. It's really just doing the frequency unmasking and the global rebalancing. So. Which is good because if you put that earlier on your bus uh, before some compression you can really have some fun with and it. And with the academy members like this is the perfect tool for learning how, how close you are like if you put one of Warren's mixes through it Golfos isn't going to do that much. It almost confirms 
this is a good mix. You're in the right ballpark. If you put something that maybe was just a bedroom demo really quickly, Golf Us is going to do more movement and it's going to let you know like there are areas that could be improved. So it's a great learning tool in that regard. Yeah, I, I, like I said, recently I've been finding that we're using it to like narrow in on areas and um, you know do like yeah there where you've got like a lot of correctional stuff and just work mainly in that area there. So right now it's a yeah. piano demo and you can almost yeah. see it following the notes of that piano. So it could fix that mid-range resonance there. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. And like high gain guitars or rock guitar busts. High yeah, gain absolutely. guitars, it's really sweet. Exactly. Um, a lot of people don't know that these sliders actually pass through one another. So if you're content with your mid-range, you can leave that unprocessed there. You'll notice there's still a little bit of activity. Yeah. That's actually the, the perceptual loudness compensation. So when you're using the bypass button and you're a being you're not being tricked by volume differences. Sure. Everything's perceptionally the same loudness. I do, I, 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 that's something I, I don't know if I pointed out in the review, but I realized quite quickly afterwards that's a really smart function. Because there's so many tools that we are fooled by just because it's 3 dB louder that it's better, yeah. Yeah, and I'm not sure, I don't think there's any other company that has the perceptual loudness compensation like we do because a lot of plugins, EQs especially, they'll work in the frequency space with Fourier transforms and everything. Andreas, our main developer, basically pioneered the perceptual space. So Golfos is doing all of its heavy lifting in a totally different mathematical domain than every other EQ, which is why it sounds the way Well, congratulations. I love the fact now everywhere I look, people are talking about yeah, it. That's thank great. You. Thank you so much. You deserve it. Great work. Thanks. We're Summon Am with Jonathan Little. How are you? I'm fine, Warren. I'm fine. Good, good, good. Big fan of yours. Why, you do make you. one of, just as a sideline, because we're going to talk about what's new. But I just want to remind somebody and everybody who's watching this that this is probably the finest headphone amp on the market. And I do like quite a few, but this is personal favorite. <coughs> no, it's phenomenal sounding. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, I get a lot of mastering guys that just, it's their go-to. If you want detail, if you want to hear edits, if you want to hear reverb tales, if you want something that's had a bunch of big tubes hanging out of it and it kind of has some, that's, you know, euphonic sound, that's one thing, but if you really got to hear the track, that's what you need. Beautiful unit. And the mono functions, of course, very useful. We've talked about it a couple of times before, but I just so, wanted to yeah, highlight we'll, we'll, it. It yeah. is beautiful. All right, what do you have that's new? What is this? Well, the LL2A, which I was hoping to have the production model out on the floor tonight, but we didn't get it in time, and I almost didn't do the show because of it. But it's a unique compressor limiter that uses a a circuit topology that's really never been done before using analog multipliers rather than an optical or any other form of doing it. Analog uh, multiplier. Analog multiplier, which is basically, uh, it's, like a, it's like a VCA in a sense, but it's a linear VCA. Yeah. And it's used in other, uh, other industries, but it's never been used in audio for this purpose. So, and it's very, it's unique. And I was wanted to do something because I learned a lot when I designed this headphone amp of having nothing in the circuit path. So I wanted to use one of these multipliers and use uh, the same amplifier I use in the monitor, which is really simple, and and use the thing so it would be a unique new product using the ultra analog multiplier as the gain reduction circuitry. But when you pass through it, you only go through that and the amplifier that's in the monitor. But what makes it also unique, it's a, it's a, a soft knee compressor meant for vocals. But what's also unique is I wanted to, to use a, a different metering system because I'm sick of these ugly VU meters that are obviously made in China. And, uh, and uh, we got an inventory of these uh, Nixie uh, Russian tubes and we're using nice. them as a uh, VU meter and a as a gain reduction meter. It's uh, yeah, I I was trying to figure out what that was. I mean, yeah. getting close. It's pretty pretty crazy looking. Look at that. And I'm assuming it's a lot more responsive than the VU, which yeah. is you know. Yeah, like but a, actually, yeah. it has a VU ballistic. Oh, uh, okay, okay. Yeah. And with the way we 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 actually use a. Uh, a, a little micro uh, microprocessor thing to actually control the voltage that controls the meter so it has the same ballistic as a VU meter. 
Now I know that talking about sound is like dancing about architecture, so this right. question is kind of redundant already. It's good, it's good. Yeah. <laughs> um, but how would you describe the sound? I know that's a ridiculous statement. Oh, very, to say. Very, uh, very open, uh, yeah. like it's hard to tell it's working. So, oh wow, I yeah. like that. Yeah, and uh, we, Little Labs, even though People have been annoyed that I called it the LL2A. It yeah, that's Little Labs. It has absolutely nothing to do with an LA2A. Yeah. But I figured it would get their attention. They'd go, oh, LA2A. And that's annoyed a lot of people. And I apologize for that, but sorry. Uh, I look at it and don't think LA2A, so it's LA2A, so it's quite all right. And I wanted to keep it simple. Yeah. With uh, basically on the production model, Six module, threshold. this is threshold yeah. and this is output. And the way it's yeah. set, this is, as I say, the prototype that yeah. it's, but it's, it'll look the same. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And when, you can mount two of them uh, next to each other. Right. And, or you can put them in a, the, in a box very similar looking to that if you want a standalone or if you want to sit it on top of the console or right. something. Another unique feature of it, it's got a dual differential signal path, which a lot of Little Lab stuff does. We never go balanced to unbalanced internally and then do everything unbalanced. If it's balanced feeding it, it runs balanced throughout the unit. And by doing that, you can actually run this stereo unbalanced, which is kind of a unique, unique thing. So you could wire it if you wanted it, pin one ground, pin two left, pin three right. Nice. Yeah, which is interesting. Not that anyone would probably do that. No, but, but I understand. Well, I actually, I hook it up to my uh, DJ system that way for you my. Do? Yeah. <laughs> I do that with the VOG too. VOG is also a fully differential circuit path, so you can wire that also left, right, unbalanced. You gotta be careful with this. I, I, I did this on a mix when I first got one with Jack. Yeah. And I was like so in love with it, and I went in my car and was like, wow, what did I do? <laughs> it's beautiful. It's really beautiful. Well, the VOG, I have a yeah. good story about S Stone Temple Pilots. A friend of mine, Eddie Mapp, he, he got a bunch of VOGs and he was doing front of house for them. And he had the guy, uh, the guy, one of the crew was being the, doing the sound check and hitting the drums and stuff. And he got them all and he had the VOGs all dialed in. But then when the drummer, his name escapes me right now, came in for the show and went boom, 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 boom. All the said, thing's blowing up. The whole PA yeah, yeah, was yeah. like boom. But one thing about the VOG, the more you increase the low end, the more it wipes out everything below that that resonant frequency. So the, if you have it uh, based around so it's high hertz, passing and it's high, yeah, it's a it's a 24 dB per octave high pass right. below that. So you don't blow out woofers. Yeah. But you can frighten the neighbors. You can frighten the neighbors. Beautiful. Well, when can I when can I get one of these to try? Well, I wish I could say right now, but hopefully in the next few weeks. Right. You know? I really want to hear this. Yeah, it's something I've been work we've been working on hard and you know, production stuff and with these tariffs and everything right now, getting parts that you need you can't get in the US and it says everything's a little running a little slower than I'd like. But we're getting there. I'm excited to hear it. Yeah. I know it's gonna be great. It's unique. Thank you ever so much. All right, my man. Excellent. Colin from BAE. <laughs> <laughs> What's new? Warren, a lot's <laughs> new. Well, Good. I think everyone's heard about UK Sound, yep. but what's really important to know this year is we're going to finish the line. So Great. there's other goodies that are coming this year, but we have just added the 276. So now we have the 1173, the 276, the 176, the 73 MPL, and a couple other goodies to come. But let's talk about the 276 because this is really an important piece in the group. First of all, it's not a stereo unit, it's a dual compressor, two separate channels. Basically, it has all the same goodies we've seen on the 176 and the 1173, but something musical happened when we put them together and kind of made sure they worked in tandem. Real interesting. Same input, same ratios, um, same switches, same attack, release, and output. I find this one has some headroom that was surprisingly cool and definitely some clarity that I really like. Lovely. So it's kind of led the way in, in the other two as far as we learned some things. And I just think out of, out of the units, this is one to definitely focus on as people are moving forward, especially in compression, where you're gonna need more than one compressor and you're gonna need multiples. Sure. X1. 
excellent unit. What is this going to retail at? Or what is it retailing at? We're right around fourteen hundred dollars. So then again, the price point's amazing. Yeah, for just pair, to, yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's you know where else can you get two compressors in that price range that you can use on vocals, on drums, on whatever you like to use it on? And I'm hoping to see consumers have multiple rack units of them so they really have a wide range of compression. Fantastic. Hi everybody, I'm here with Drew from Berg. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. <laughs> and you're uh, you're South African, but you live in Berlin. Yeah, that's right. I've been there since roughly 2004. It's beautiful. Yeah. So, is the microphone made there? The M1. The M1. Yeah, the M1s. Um, and it's all made in Germany or in Berlin, actually. Um, it's basically a heritage microphone. Um, I'm working with designer Andreas Grosser on the project, and um, basically his time since the 70s working on Neumann AKGs, all the, all the, all the famous ones that we all grew up with, yep. um, uh, and his knowledge that he's obtained over the years through that. So I wanted to do a, not only a heritage mic based, based on German tube mics, but also Andreas's time in the industry. Um, yeah, so we we uh, using a, a TH M7 capsule in the in the in the microphone right. as part of the heritage the heritage background. The rest is all completely new. Um, it's a new circuit design from him. Custom wound transformers, both power supply and and, and microphone itself. Um, Wonderful. Um, we got a very low noise Russian old tube NOS tube that we're using. Sure. Um, which is. The reason why we chose that is for the noise floor. It has noise floor specs similar or better to most effect microphones on the market. On the market, it also has handles SBL like them as well, so you can stick in front of a kick drum, uh, loud guitar amp, but kind of handles it all. Um, another feature that we've done with the mic is that we also have a, um, a, a true cardioid function on the mic and variable pol polar pattern. So you'll you'll normally. You buy two separate mics for that. One is pure, right. a true cardioid, and the other one has the variable polar patterns. I think we're the first person to do this, actually. Right. Um, and yeah, we, we, we're kind of assembling at the moment um, and Wonderful. start shipping soon, hopefully. I love it. I, I just, uh, for those of you who know, I just put on the headphones and uh, messed around with it. Um, one characteristic, and I, this is interesting because I don't hear anybody talk about it, but mm. let's talk about it. One characteristic of Neumanns that we love, especially 47s, mm. is that they can handle EQ. Yeah, yeah. And this is something um, I did a shootout the other day. That's the most important thing, yeah. Yeah, and we had like a bunch of every mic you can imagine. Yeah. And the thing was, initially, some microphones sound to our ears better because they're super bright. Yeah. But you That's can't exactly do much it, yeah. with them. They yeah. suddenly turn all lispy and and S E and T and the great thing about about that capsule, you know, and I just so basically what I did is just put on the headphones and I started talking into it and I started pushing EQ on it. Which is a great way to test a mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Because if it can't handle the EQ and it starts going yeah. all over the place, yeah. walk away. Yeah. Because it's giving you an idea of like can that mic sit in exactly. a mix? Yeah, yeah. And it's something I never hear anybody talk about. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it's a big part of why we love the sound of uh, 47s in particular is how smooth and even they are yeah, exactly, without yeah. any bumps, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah it's kind of, we, 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 we wanted a microphone that was, like I said, it, it, it has that heritage and that vintage vibe about it, but it's also for, in, for modern, uh, the, the, yeah. the modern industry, you know. Yeah. But it does handle EQ very, very well. Yeah. It takes it beautifully. Um, it doesn't have an overblown top end. It sounds pretty. Yeah. It's a bit, also, because the amplifier stage is really flat, yeah. obviously you're going to get certain bumps and boosts sure. in places because of the circuit and because of the tube, because of the, 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 the capsule. But in general, it's pretty flat. But if, when you do start EQing exactly like you say, it doesn't start. It doesn't start hurting, and you don't yeah. get that wispy, phasey sounding sure. thing in the top end. Which yeah. is interesting because a lot of like the new latest and greatest cheaper mics, people love them, but that's it. That's, that's sort it, of yeah. the sound. I, I've tried using some sort of uh, you know whatever the latest three hundred dollar yeah, mic yeah. is, and I just can't. I can't use them as un, in, in a dense mix. Yeah, yeah. It's like they just don't handle EQ. Yeah, yeah. So how much is this going to be? Um, the European price is five and a half, excluding right. VAT. We try to keep it. Now we're going against the the ten grand plus microphone, so we've we've right. kept it we've kept it at a at a price that we kind of kind of happy with. Um, and all being machined out of solid brass and all custom parts, it's been quite difficult, but we've managed to pull it off. We're all built in Berlin? Well, the metalwork comes from the EU, but the rest all comes from where we're doing everything just outside Berlin, basically. Great. Yeah, yeah. Wonderful. Cool. Yeah, great. Well, thanks ever so much. Yeah, for nice to meet you. <laughs> Hello, Marco, at Jammy Guitar. Hey. Are you doing well? 
doing pretty well, thanks. So is this your first time at NAM, Summer NAM? Uh, nope, we actually were here last summer. Oh, you were? Yeah, we Great. actually got a Best in Show last you summer. You did? Yep. Congratulations. Thank you. So tell us about your Best in Show product. Uh, so it's called Jammy Guitar, yep. and it's a super portable digital guitar. That whole, that whole phrase, I mean digital guitar is one yeah. thing, but yeah. super portable Yeah, we, uh, we wanted to make a guitar that you would be able to put in your backpack and yep. take with you anywhere you go. Okay. Uh, the, the idea came to me when I was traveling lots for work and I wouldn't normally take my guitar with me when I would travel there. Great. Uh, and I wanted something that I could put in the backpack, go to like a songwriter retreat Great. or something like that. Um, and we started working with a team of very, very skilled hardware engineers right. and we built a guitar uh, that splits in half um, and it's, when it's disassembled it's just 17 inches long. Wow. Uh, so you can really pack light uh, and take it with you can anywhere you Can we see it? Sure. Let's see it. Is that, that is it? Yeah. That's crazy. So this is the guitar. Um, can you turn it down? Yeah. yeah. So it disassembles like this. The frame right. goes away. Yeah. And this comes <laughs> apart like that. Uh, and so when I say that it's fully digital, I mean that it tracks uh, the, the position of the yeah. fingers of your left hand right here. Yeah. Um, and it combines that with what it reads from the strings right here. Let's, let's see um, what it does. To produce the sound. Yeah, sure. I want to see what it does. So this is crazy though, because you're going, it's fully digital, but it's going in. Yeah, yeah. So okay. um, it has a quarter inch jack, so you yeah. can plug it directly into an app. Yeah. It's It's got a sound engine on board, so it's yeah. generating all the sound right here. Oh well. Wow. Does um, it also have a MIDI capability as well? It does have MIDI capabilities as well, which I'll show you in the moment. Okay, great. Uh, so it outputs through, like I said, this cord, and also you can plug your headphones straight into it, so you don't need like any extra nice. equipment, not even an amp. Well, let's see what it feels like. Yeah, sure. I, uh, wow, it is light. Take my weakest finger. That is light. Wow. Is it open D right now? Yeah. All right. It's in an open D tuning right now, actually. Oh, it is? Yeah. So if you want to switch from open D to a standard tuning. It's got a regular tuning, yeah. It goes like this. There you go. Okay. You're in standard tuning now. That knob over there. When you press, when you press the knob down, yep. it'll toggle between effects. So, oh, uh, no, just press it down. Like, yep, it's like that. So you see, it'll go between different effects right here on the app. headphones on we wanted to give them the most like all-in-one experience so you can play to a metronome that runs directly from the from the guitar
Thanks, Marco. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. It was much. a lot of fun and congratulations on the... Uh, how long did it take you to put this together? We've been working on it since 2015. Okay, so it's not bad. Yeah, under four years now. Under four years? Yeah. Right. Where are you based? Uh, we have an office in Kyiv, Ukraine. Yeah. We manufacture these, these in China. Yeah. Uh, and we now have an office in the States. Great. And where are you based? Are you in Kyiv? Or I'm, I'm from Kyiv. Yeah. yeah. Right. Well, fantastic. Thanks ever so much. Awesome. Thanks.